What's going on everybody? So check this out. Um, I was thinking about trying to do something a little bit different. Um, I've never done a video like this. So I wanted to talk about something that I've slowly become addicted to over the last couple of years. And anyone that really knows me, I'm sure is already annoyed as fuck by it, but um, simply it's just this. It's these guys right here, these guys. Um, I don't know how to explain why I'm addicted to it. It's just, I've been learning card magic over the last couple years, uh, ever since Rosemary was born. And I just find it so therapeutic and so relaxing to just do it, as well as bring a smile to someone's day. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, something about it is just mwah. Uh, but anyways, I wanted to talk about it and uh, get into doing reviews about decks because I just started collecting them um, and I just find them so fascinating. So. We'll just get right into it, all right? See you in a second. Okay, today I'd like to review this gorgeous deck of Arco White Standard playing cards brought to us from the USPCC. Originally reprinted in 2011, this 2018 release of the white version was needless to say, limited, and an incredibly high demand deck as the price for them at the time was still around six bucks a deck. And being out of print for so long, the USPCC alongside project creator Will Roya decided it was time to bring back a classic. And again, remind ourselves that quality is strong within the USPCC. Usually embodied in the classic red or blue prints, this white edition, I believe, was a Kickstarter stretch goal and was made among the release of the blue and reds. The front is a black and white color scheme with the classic Arco US regulation playing cards printed on the front, outlined in dual black borders and their signature spadil in gray to accent the Arco lettering with a capital A and all four suits represented in the center. The bottom of the tuck reads NYMP, ArcoCards.com and various manufacturing details with no barcode. The sides read the United States Playing Card Company on one and premium finish made in the USA on the other. The top flap reads poker size and 501 with no seal as well. Further research unfortunately has not revealed the 501 meaning or purpose. The cards themselves are as to be expected. Printed by the USPCC out of Erlinger, Kentucky, it maintains the classic Arco back design, gorgeous with its ability to be extremely busy up close but still instantly recognizable at a distance and faces that are akin to the Arcos found from the 80s and earlier. Longer framed royal faces with an emphasis on softer, more detailed lines and expressions with more personal touches around hands, more characteristic faces, and small features like the eyes and overall detailing in the royal attire. The pips are in comparison to a bicycle standard print a little more crushed in size, and in the only words I can think of, a little chubbier, which, like classic Arco or Tahoe cards, it's well suited and welcomed as a gentle reminder, again, of what classic cards looked like in the days of Motown or at a gas station in the middle of nowhere playing solitaire in the late 60s, waiting for your car to get an oil change. Again, because this is a limited release deck, it features an inverted black and white color scheme. The cards are made with premium cardstock and from what I can tell on examination, bicycles, trademark, air cushion finish and gloss. Included as well in the deck is two jokers, one with a special card reveal. Two double back cards, one regular, one with a blue back and comes in a special stacked order right out of the box. Although if you cut the cards at the two of hearts and perform a perfect pharaoh or riffle shuffle with the four of clubs on top. It creates an almost mnemonic stack, but not entirely. If someone out there knows, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd love to know what and why they went with this special stack. They are fairly, if not exactly the same type of card that you would expect from the USPCC or bicycle brand. It fans well, shuffles, ferrules, and allows for really nice, really smooth handling when performing tricks. The one downside though, is that I'm finding that they are definitely a little stiff out of the box, but with a few shuffles and springs, they break in to be a really durable yet soft handling deck. In comparison to other decks in that price range, for the price of six bucks a deck upon release, had I known these existed, I would have snagged definitely a brick. Still great to look at, play with, and at a dollar more than my current street favorites, the Skull deck or the Unicorn deck. Both great right out of the box and only at five to seven bucks depending on where you look. And where did I find this? I know a lot of people will ask. Unfortunately and maybe fortunately, I found these awesome sales on mixed bricks from uh, playingcarddecks.com. Uh, not a sponsor. But for 75 bucks Canadian, including shipping, I was sent one of these decks among several other very high value decks 
uh, that I couldn't be happier to own in my collection. My final thoughts on this, honestly, I really, really can't complain with any deck under the $10 mark that offers a properly working deck right out of the box with magicians in mind first. And that is a huge, huge A plus on my end uh, as a practicing street magician. The only downside is that just like a generic bike deck, they're stiff and absolutely must be broken in before any serious street work. Because after you do, they become softer and handled much better. Although only time will tell how long they will go before they become clumpy, but I might just come back to that in another video. And again, I'd like to give a huge shout out to uh, playingcarddecks.com for offering up a crazy selection and an amazing price on random mixed decks. Uh, without things like this, I would have never found this deck and others like it, so if you're looking for a massive selection of cards from any style and flavor, definitely check them out. The link's in the description below, and if you found this review interesting and informative, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, like this video, and hit that notification bell button for further videos like this and other fun content. I'm your boy, John Japanda. Thanks for chilling with me. I'll see you all in the next video.